Hello everyone and welcome to this video on creating a high score for your game. In this video we're going to explore some simple techniques for storing data on your system. To do that we'll be using Unity's built-in player prefs, something that's pretty easy to use but can come in really really handy. Alright, let's get started. So as you can see I've set up this test scene with a few UI pieces. First off we have the roll dice button, whenever we press this we want the number to change to a random number between 1 and 6. We also have the high score which is going to display the largest number that we have so far. So whenever our score is greater than the high score, we'll set our high score equal to that number. And then finally we have a button for resetting our high score. So let's make these things actually do something. Let's begin by creating an empty object. Let's reset the transform and call this one dice. We also add a component to this and call that dice as well. I'm going to choose C sharp and hit create an add. Let's double click it to open it up in Visual Studio. Let's remove the two using tags up here and both the methods. So the first thing we need to do is change our score text. To do that we need a reference to the text object and it's using the Unity GUI system. So remember whenever we code for the Unity GUI we need to go up here and say using Unity Engine dot UI. We're now able to make a variable of type text and we'll call it our score. Of course we need to make sure that this is marked as public and this way when we save it and go back into Unity we can take this score object and simply drag it in. Now in order to update this we need to make a method. Let's go void and let's call it something like update score or roll dice. We can then get a random number. We do that by going random dot range and the number we want to get is between 1 and this is inclusive and then 7 and this is exclusive. This way we can get the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 but not the number 7. We can then store this in a temporary variable so let's write integer and let's give this variable a name say let's just call it number. So we're now creating an integer variable called number and giving it a random number between 1 and 6. We can then set score dot text equal to that number. However, there's one slight problem with this and that is that our number is currently an integer whereas our text is a string. So we need to convert from one data type to another. Luckily, converting to strings is really easy. All we need to do is write dot to string and then two parentheses. And this function will go ahead and convert the number into a string so everything adds up. We now save this head into Unity and of course nothing is going to happen so far because we are not actually calling the function. We've made the function but we need to also trigger it. To do that we use a button event. So let's find our roll dice button and this is just an ordinary button. We go ahead and add an on click event by hitting the plus. We drag in the dice where our script is sitting. Then if we go here and select a function we can go under the dice script and select one. But you can see that our function is not currently visible. That's because we also need to mark the function as public. So let's go into Visual Studio and insert public. Again, save that and when we now go into Unity we can see that under dice there is now a function called roll dice. Alright so when we hit play we are now able to roll the dice and get a random number and display it on the screen. But how do we store this as a high score? To do that we use what is called player prefs. Player prefs is a data serialization tool built into Unity. That means that it's a way for Unity to store pieces of data somewhere on our system. That means that during our game we can set certain values and then load them back in at a later time and so we can have data precise from one gameplay session to another as long as it's on the same computer. Taking advantage of player prefs is actually really easy. To set a number we go player prefs dot set integer. Note that you can also set floats or strings but we'll set integer and this is a function that takes in two values. The first one is a key. This is simply a string that makes the name of the variable. So in our case we could call it something like high score. We then write comma and feed it the value. In our case the value is going to be number, whatever number we rolled. If we then wanted at a later point to get this value, we use playerprefs.get. An example of this could be at the beginning of our game, we could do this in the start method, which is called whenever we start the game, we could display our high score. So of course we need a reference to a high score text object, so let's create another public text and call this one high score. And then in the start method we'll set high score dot text equal to, and then we use playerprefs dot get int and as the key we need to write the exact same as we did down here or else it's not going to work so I'm just going to copy it and that's all we need to do. Only of course this is again returning an integer and highscore.text is requiring a string. So we need to again follow this up with dot to string. 
So what we should see now is that whenever we roll the dice, we are going to display a random number and store that number on the computer as high score. Then the next time we start the game, we are going to set our high score text equal to that high score number. But of course the first time we start our game, there isn't going to be a high score stored. And so we need to give this some kind of default value. And that's really easy. All we do inside of our getInt method is write a comma and then the default value we want. And we are just going to set that to zero. So let's save this and see if it works. Of course make sure to select the dice and drag in the high score text as well. So we can play. We can see that at first our high score sets itself to zero. We can then roll the dice and our high score is not going to update yet. But if we then exit play mode and play again, it's going to remember that value. But there are a few problems with this. First off, we want the high score to update as soon as we roll the dice. But we also only want it to update if we get a value that's larger. Right now if we roll the dice and get say the value 2, that's what it's going to remember. So if we go back here and hit play, it should now display 2. And of course we never want our high score to decrease. To fix this, again we go into Visual Studio, we go down here to where it sets our high score, and we simply check if the number we rolled is bigger than our current high score. To do that we write if, then number, and we want to check if that's greater than, and then we get a high score. So we write player prefs, and the key is high score, and then again a default value of 0, and that's it. So if this if statement is true, it means that we've beaten our high score. And so we can go ahead and set it to the new number. We could also add some kind of effect here, congratulating the player on beating the score. Finally, we probably also want to update the high score right away, and not wait until we reboot the game. To do that, we just set high score, equal to the number we rolled. Again, we only want to do this if we rolled a greater number. And again, remember to put two string here. So if we now save and head back into Unity, our high score system should actually be complete. So currently our high score is 2. If we roll the dice and get a 6, you can see it updating. But if we roll the dice again and get a 1, it stays at 6. And if we exit the game and play it again, we can see that our high score still remembers the 6. But what if we want to reset our high score? This is really really handy when debugging, but sometimes you also want players to be able to reset their settings and start over. Doing that is really really simple. All we need to do is go in and add another the function. We'll also make this a public void so we can trigger it using the button and we'll call it something like reset. We can then open and close some curly brackets and in here we'll write player prefs dot delete and here we have the possibility of deleting a specific key. In our case we would go in and say delete key and then high score and this would work just fine. Or we can delete all of the saved settings. Of course use this with caution. If you're also storing other stuff like player usernames, progress data or anything else, it will be deleted. But I like living on the edge so I'm just gonna write delete all. Let's save this. And in Unity we now need to add this to the on click event. So let's go under the reset button. Let's add an on click event. Let's drag in our dice. And this time as the function, we are not going to select roll dice but reset. And so when we hit play, we can still roll the dice and everything, but as soon as we hit reset, it's going to reset our high score. Of course we can't see this because we aren't updating the text object, but if we go out of play mode and go back in, we can see that it sets itself back to zero. And so all we need to do is just add high score dot text equals and then we'll write a zero here. Of course the quotation marks are still there because we want it to be a string. Now we can actually visually see that it resets. Let's hit play, roll the dice, reset the high score, roll it again and you can see that now working. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future episode. Also remember that you can easily expand upon this system to turn it into a full featured scoreboard. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. <laughs> Thanks to all the awesome people who donated in February, and a special thanks to Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, James Calhoun, and Jason Latito. If you want to become a patron yourself, you can do so at patreon.com slash Thanks a lot guys.